Hello everybody, my name is Ben Ga, the Friendly Neighborhood Haiku Poet, and welcome to my new channel, where I'll be taking a haiku from the latest issue of a journal, in this case, Live Spirit from the British Haiku Society, it's volume 31, number 3, and I'm, I'll take it, break it down, talk about why I like it, and what makes it great, so to speak. <laughs> I don't want to get into Rick Beato's territory here, but it's the same kind of idea. I'd like to take take you through what makes a haiku work and what makes it really resonate for me. Now granted this is going to be a little a little bit uh, subjective, obviously, but that's okay uh, because you'll hopefully pick up a few things as as you hear me talk about these poems and why I think they're they're really good and, and worthwhile. Uh, these will all be contemporary English language haiku, which means they will not follow the 575 template that you might have uh, been taught in, in in grade school or high school or, or mostly what you might encounter in your day-to-day -day world out there. Uh, in fact, these, these poems will be less than 575 syllables, a total of 17 syllables, and they will uh, showcase what makes this form of poetry really work. Uh, I will also be talking about Senru, which is Haiku's cousin. Uh, as Haiku deal with nature at large, Senru deal with human nature. And uh, this will just be an ongoing, ongoing series of taking a look at one poem at a time. Uh, why one poem and not several? Uh, because we're busy, life's busy, we have a lot going on, and, and there's a lot to unpack in one small little poem. Trust me, you'll see. Uh, through the series, you'll probably see my cat Anastasia wander in and out of places. Uh, I'll probably change the background, and over time, I'm sure the audio and video will get better over time. And, and I'm just kind of figuring these, this, this whole thing out. But it seems like it's a worthwhile thing, because if there's one thing that we need more of in this world, it's empathy. It's connection. It's a way of getting through this human experience that we all share. And that's something that regardless of where you are on the planet, we all are human and we all share what it, you know, we all live, we're all alive. And the, these poems are, are, are wonderful and hopefully you'll enjoy them in this journey as we, we go, go along with this together. Uh, thank you very much for paying attention, for tuning in and we will, uh, I will, uh, try to do my best to give you good commentary, good context, and we'll move along. So thanks for tuning in again, and welcome to the start of this journey. Again, my name is Ben Ga, and this is Haiku Talk with your friendly neighborhood haiku poet. And the first one is going to be a poem by Brian Rickert from Blythe's, the latest issue of Blythe Spirit. So there's a poem in here by Brian Rickert that goes, Field of wildflowers, a butterfly chooses me. Field of wildflowers, a butterfly chooses me. It's a really nice poem, a really nice, uh, nice piece. It's a three-line piece. Um, uses the fragment and phrase structure, where you have the fragment is field of wildflowers, starts it off, and then the phrase is, a butterfly chooses me. And what's really nice about this moment is that normally when you're in a feeling in a field of wildflowers, um, you might pick your own flowers. You're choosing something yourself. And uh, it's kind of exciting, it's a nice thing. And, and in this case, it's a little bit of a twist. You're not picking something. The eye of the poem is not picking something. Instead, the eye of the poem, the human in the poem, is being picked. And by what? By a butterfly. So it's a very nice, very nice construct, very nice poem, very nice moment. Uh, 
uh, which is a bit of, and that's the bit of a surprise. So field of wildflowers, a butterfly. You know. So first of all, the, the first line sets the scene. Field of wildflowers. Great line. You know, already, you know, we're using um, simple, succinct, and suggestive language to put and put in a place. I know exactly exactly where I am, and um, what's this is truly showcases what make haiku really a powerful poem because when I step into that field of wildflowers, I'm completely stepping into my own field. I'm, I'm completely in my own world. I, I'm imagining something, you know, that's, that's unique to me. And so already from this first line, I know I'm, I'm put in a place know where I am and all my mind and, and my, all my senses are engaged in completing what that location is. All that all he says is field of wildflowers. It's a suggestive, suggestive line that hints at this location and I'm engaged. I'm hooked. What comes next? A butterfly. So you have field of wildflowers then a butterfly. What a wonderful thing. So already, it's a, it's like a delight upon a delight. You know what I mean? You have the field of wildflowers, and then you have a butterfly coming into that field. Great scene, very peaceful. Uh, it, it, the way that I'm stepping into this moment, it's a very peaceful, happy, warm poem, beautiful colors. This butterfly saunters through into the image, into the scene with me. And then the last line is, chooses me. So the butterfly chooses me. Out of everything else happening, everything else going on in the in the world, in this field, the butterfly that saunters in chooses me. Now what does that mean? Um, the way I see it is the butterfly lands on me. A human. For whatever reason. It's amazing. It's really a peaceful really uh, powerful in its, in its simplicity because it, what it does is it reminds us that the butterfly is a sentient being. It is alive. It does butterfly things. Now we don't necessarily know what butterflies think, how they think, how they view the world, what, what they do, but they make choices. They know how to migrate. Some of them, you know, monarch butterflies, have great migrations that they go, go through. They obviously know what flowers to look for. They know what feeds them without any advertisements. Uh, they, they, they know how to maneuver life in whatever way they do. And, and that's a, it's powerful. To, it's good to realize that and recognize that. And that's something that haiku does is that it brings you aware, makes you aware again that everything on this planet, we share it together, and everything has just as much of a right to be here as anything else. And in this case, the butterfly of all the flowers, for whatever reason, chooses me. And because the poem is set up so that it chooses me, when I read the poem, that me is me. Suddenly, I, a butterfly chose me, Ben Ga, in this moment, in this scene. And I don't know if you've ever had the wonderful experience of being out and about and having a butterfly land on you. You know, you might have to reach back into your childhood uh, when such wonders were still kind of magical and amazing and um, really captivated you as something to be excited about. But it is kind of a magical thing when a butterfly lands on you. Um, because it, it doesn't see you as a threat. It doesn't see you as anything other than another thing, another being in this world. And it knows it's not going to feed off you, but it, it decides to land on you to take pause, take rest, take refuge. And to think another species, another being, another living thing on this planet that's vastly different from a human, a butterfly is tremendously different than a human 
as far as it's, I mean, it's got an exoskeleton, you know, it starts out as a larva, goes through a cocoon, you know, the, it emerges as a butterfly. I mean, we don't do that. We're completely different types of, of creatures. But yet, they're still possible for connection. And this poem reminds us that. This poem reminds us of that. And that's a powerful thing. It's something that's worth being mindful of as we move through our day-to-day -day lives. Well, job. Well, well done, Brian.